By now you should have reviewed the videos that explain the rotating frame of reference for both the spin animation in the bottom right and the real space animation in the top left. We can now discuss frequency and fade encoding at greater length. First, note that the k-space diagram in the top middle contains a green circle. This circle represents our position in k-space. Our position in k-space moves along the y-axis when the phase gradient is on and moves along the x-axis when the frequency gradient is on. Also note that when the signal is measured, k-space becomes filled with data. This is represented by those pixels in k-space being filled with the color purple, our color for the signal. K-space is only a representation of what's going on in real space, though. When the phase encode gradient is on, it changes the relative phase of the dipoles along the y-axis. When the frequency encode gradient is on, it changes the relative phase of the dipoles along the x-axis. In other words, the gradients change the spatial frequency of the dipoles. The spatial frequency is also represented on the real space diagram with the curves beneath and to the right of the dipoles. This is actually what k-space represents. The further we move into k-space in a direction, the higher the spatial frequency becomes along that direction. The signal filling a pixel of k-space represents the signal from all the dipoles when the dipoles are out of phase at the spatial frequencies designated by that location in k-space. This is why a point in k-space can't be mapped to a single point in real space. The sequence is also usually executed such that the center of k-space is prioritized. This sequence demonstrates how this can be done. Along the frequency encode direction, notice that when the signal peaks at the moment the echo is at its maximum, the frequency encode gradient is run such that we are right on the y-axis in k-space. This way, the pixels near the y-axis get the best signal-to-noise ratio, while the pixels at the left and right of k-space have poorer signal-to-noise ratio. For phase encoding, our prioritization of the center of k-space looks a bit different. Remember that as we get further away from the initial 90 degree pulse, the echo gets weaker because of irreversible T2 effects. This is why the phase encoding gradient is run such that we fill lines of k-space nearest to the x-axis using the first echo and move further away from the x-axis with subsequent echoes. This means that the lines next to the y-axis have the best signal-to-noise ratio, while the pixels at the top and bottom of k-space have poorer signal-to-noise ratio. To understand why we prioritize the center of k-space and how we even get a diagnostic image from k-space requires a discussion on two-dimensional Fourier transforms.